Hello there, ladies and gentlemen germs of the internet. Thank you very much for watching. This is Pastiche of Skin. Welcome to another episode of Final Fantasy XV Brotherhood. Today we're actually going to be looking at an episode that actually focuses on Gladiolus. Or Gladiolus? Glad Glad Gladiolus? Gladiolus. The big dude with the big sword. Uh, one of the Brotherhood of... The Brotherhood of Four that actually kind of travel around and... Uh, pretty much live the life of Prince Noctis' bodyguards while also being his friends and, well, extended family. We previously episode, we watched uh, one with Prompto, which is the blonde-haired loudmouth, and uh, you couldn't get more of a polar opposite of characters, really. This one, this dude looks like the kind of, like, the big, the big aggressive, kind of, like, silent type, but obviously he kind of has a, a soft spot for Noctis. Um, well, you don't see him in any of the other materials that they've actually, like, shown so far except for him being in the background more often because Ignis tends to actually be the uh, the one who kind of controls the situation. He's like the one who's organizing where they're going, what they're doing. Prompto is just loud, so you can't really ignore him. Gladiolus is the one that you hear and see the least of in a lot of cases, but I'm sure he actually probably has one of the longest histories with the characters. So let's take a look to see what they show in this episode, which is episode three, Sword and... Oh, I hope I've actually had this property set up. Episode three, Sword and Shield. So, um... With the, whenever I notice with the weapon systems in Final Fantasy XV, of course it's actually all a like constructed kind of weaponry made out of magic that you've actually kind of imagined. Um, I've been essentially looking at the fact that each character kind of has a particular focus of weapons. Ignis is small, short blades. And of course, uh, Pronto is guns, because I don't think he can, can he can actually pick the gun up? I think he actually just pulls the gun. Uh, Doctors, of course, switch between them all, but the long blade, the big buster sword kind of guy, is Gladiolus. Which, uh, the name Gladiolus, Gladiolus, seems to be the one that actually does all the fighting. <laughs> but, but even like that, he seems to be like your tank of the party. So awesome. Um, with the idea of like saying we're going to have a feast tonight, I'm assuming you actually get to craft and grab food from uh, the haunted creatures and stuff, and anything that you pull up along the way. <laughs> I love the fact that just, the creatures do exist in the world and they will do what they are going to do, so you may not actually be fighting just the enemies you meant to fight in the So this event obviously doesn't take place with the first episode, same as the second episode, doesn't think that this is all like preamble to the flesh of what they were doing in the days previously. You've got a chance to see how many you can take. Boom. Cool. So obviously he was uh, not a combat trainer, combat teacher, as he was growing up. And I could imagine him being a bit of a drill sergeant. Hmm. Trying to get him to do anything. Ah, cool. We actually do get a couple more scenes with uh, his father. At a much younger age as well, of course, because in Kingsley, if he is an uh, aging man, he's actually pr worn out by holding the city's uh, security, the actual giant wall of the city, the magical wall, together, and it's uh, putting a strain on his body. Hmm. So we're going to make a big habit, a big thing about his eating habits in this, I'm sure. <laughs> gladdy? <laughs> gladdy the gladdy. Gladdy the laddy. <laughs> I like the fact that you're actually, you're obviously going to have a kind of a turn with the character in this episode because he obviously hits not as at the beginning, but I can imagine it, him being a bratty school kid prince, can't really associate with him or can't like understand him too much. Drag your ass to bed, kiddo. He sit there and eat milk food all day, but he won't eat his goddamn carrots. 
このバカ、なんでいるんだバカって言った方がバカなんだよ一人で来たのかうん、ノクト見に来たはあ、ダメに決まってんだろなんでお兄ちゃん会ってる俺は親衛隊なの<笑> It's just a, I like the, the basic thought process Oh, the little girl or the little kid just kind of like But it makes no sense, you see him every day やったーありがとうございます An audience with the prince. Mm. お兄ちゃんは仕事。頑張って。You can't trust your little good sister with absolutely anything. Like, you stay there. I'm making sure you're staying there. I'm waiting for one more check. Oh. <laughs> It's one of those things that's so easy to catch a child's attention that I, I honestly could imagine that exactly happened. She was looking at the butterfly, saw a cat, and then forgot about the butterfly, forgot about Noctis, forgot about everything, and then decided to follow the cat. <laughs> Troublemaker kitty. Sweet puffy jacket. <laughs> one of the things I've heard. They, they've really gone for like a very particular kind of like design and aesthetic for the characters in this, which is kind of it's um, it's, it's stylish for like their, the fact they're wearing leather and like whatever shiny gear they're wearing, but it's really toned down whenever you think about it in the context of a lot of the Final Fantasy games. It's going for um, like chic modern rather than actually being. Fantastical in any way, shape, or form. Like it, it was the most kind of like contemporary esque style, kind of like cities and whatever else. Even in Advent Children, which was actually like a movie that was trying to actually look contemporary slash science fiction y in a way, everybody was like ripped shoulders and、uh, bangles are four times the size of their wrists, and you know, like all, little stupid things like that. This is actually the, I, I was it a fancy based in reality? I think that, that was actually one of the phrases they used back whenever Final Fantasy XIII Versus was being like, toted around a fantasy based in reality or a fantasy from reality. I like the idea of that. So, obviously, the kid's well out of the grounds of his own castle, so that's going to be a problem or a half. But,、um, yeah. I think he may have to go out and get him out himself. <laughs> of course, like, she's gone. It's her fault. Would you spend an entire day searching for a kitty? Well, obviously, she knows her way around. She got to the castle on her own. What the hell? It fell out of nowhere? That's, <laughs> that was actually a tragically terrible fall. Oh, that's because she's tired and. Upset. You know, son. You know, kids become unbelievably klutzy whenever they're tired. It's like all coordination seems to just be lost. Oh. Oh, there you go. Not just the basic, like, just the low level confidence built into him. だからあの出口のことは内緒だよ。はい。お兄ちゃんに怒られる。お兄ちゃん？クラディオお兄ちゃん。クラディオ。Wonder if he actually gets who Gladi is。ヒリス。お兄ちゃん。お前どこ行ってたんだ？みんなに心配かけて。なんとか言えヒリス。どうした？グラディオラス。あ、うん、あ、あ<笑>あ、あ<笑>あ、あ、ね、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、城を抜け出して良い立場か。いや、あの、だ、その軽率さが
イリスも身を危険にさらすかもしれないとは考えなかったのか See, it's one of those things where, like, it's actually a good deed, but of course, we'll reflect badly on him. しばらく謹慎だ、yeah. That'll be disappointing. Anyway, it's not going to be that big of a deal, though. You know he was in the natural, right? He actually made a good moral choice, so. He knows the truth. Noctis knows the truth. Dad's none the wiser. <laughs> kids will be kids, as long as they actually watch out for each other. But you can see why it kind of like made him change his mind, so. He protected his sister. Or he's gonna protect Noctis. Ah! I was gonna get him to get a dog. I was gonna get him to get a dog. I was gonna get him to get a dog. All it takes is like the, the voice of a little sister <laughs> to actually make any man fall apart and go, like, Alright, okay, I believe you, I believe you. <laughs> Sorry, not the voice. Tears of a little sister. Well, that's his homework. And kids gotta be smart enough to actually be able to do it, so. <laughs> Why is this the case? So I actually like the fact that each of these tales and characters that we kind of develop along the way is watching Noctis grow as well as a person. I mean, Prompto's story kind of like had as like younger than this, but also older than this. But again, this is him at younger. Ah. Well, of course it won't go easy on you. The whole point is to train you to be strong. Hmm. Ah, I'm sure. Brewfist of the era. Evidently, I like the design of that kind of like Brewfist instead of actually knuckle the knuckle. Boom, and the kid does well. So obviously the pair of them are badasses in their own right now. That's the time difference they've had between. But it's all because of Iris. <laughs> well, they probably let... Yeah, they're going to... Well, I'm just thinking about the fact that they kind of went... Yeah, that one can go. It actually saved our ass. Thank you. And because the spice is life? I mean, spice is necessary to go to space? Spice is everything. How was it? Ah, this one is a guy. It's a draw. It's a draw. It's not easy to win. Hmm. So I like the idea of like kind of a basic friendly rival. So it's like, I'm always going to push you to be a little bit stronger. Good character. See, all, every single, all of these are actually just really good character moments, and I hope that the game's filled with moments like this that actually evolve it a little bit further, because I'd be afraid of it actually being bland and without flavor. Uh, like, it'd be like a, a, it'd be without spice. There's no spice involved. Like, you can get to the stake of the game, but this is the spice. The spice is a bit that's important. In fact, that was a perfect line to actually have it on. I wish I could have just ended right now, because I could have actually used that as my last line before I walked out, but no, no, no. It came to me, and I said it straight out of my mouth while even thinking. But yes, that's what this is. This is the spice to a well-seasoned steak, you know? This is actually the marinade, this is the, the the slow cook, this is the tenderness. Oh god, I am fucking hungry, I don't know. I, like, after watching the prompt episode, I should probably think I should never be hungry again. But yeah, the this is actually making me excited to play more of Final Fantasy XV, and I hope it is for you guys as well. I want to say thank you very much for watching. This has been uh, Final Fantasy XV Brotherhood on uh, Pastiche of Skin. We actually worked our way through three episodes of the five that are available. And of course, we're going to be moving on to episode four, Bittersweet Memories. 
involving Ignis in the next actual video. So, um, yeah, guys, thank you very much for watching. If you liked what you saw and you liked to hear my commentary, you can, of course, hit the subscribe button up here, and that allows you to actually see a lot more of the episodes and stuff that I actually do here on the channel. And if you go over to this side, you can actually end up grabbing episodes of things that have actually been done previously, uh, playthroughs of World of Final Fantasy, uh, episodes of this series, and, of course, other things relating to Final Fantasy, and other games, plenty of other games. We're just on a bit of a binge at the moment. So, guys, I want to say thank you very much for watching, and I will see you all in the next episode. Bye-bye.